The Rooklift is a devastating weapon for white in the isolated queen pawn position. Or for black, if, if it's black who's got the isolated queen pawn. We are continuing the series on uh, mastering the isolated queen pawn position. Very important structure that arises in a variety of openings. Um, this is GM Talks. I'm your host, Suneberg Hansen, Danish Grandmaster and National Coach. We're going to see two games where White is successful with the Rook Lift. So let's get going. It's an old game. The first one is from 1976 and it's uh, Miles versus, uh, oh, Keen versus Miles. Um, sorry, uh, Keen. Uh, and let's go into it. This is the symmetrical English uh, and e3, and we can we uh, this we go into an uh, well semi Taurus Taurus uh, stru structure where he took here. You can take with the pawn here as black, and then white would uh, playing be playing against the IC, uh, I isolated queen pawn, and black would have it. Uh, instead, Miles chooses to take with the knight. And um, and we are now in the semi terrace or um, which is uh, the, the co echo code is D42, but it it's, can also arrive in the Caro can pan off. And I think that's the most common occurrence that it, it comes from there. Uh, castle, all these moves are normal. Rook E1, as we discussed earlier, White would like his rooks on D1 and E1. And knight f6. I think the theoretical best move here is uh, this move followed by knight here. And this is supposed to be almost equal. I would prefer to have white, but it's not bad for black. He's very solid and uh, and you can play this way. Knight f6 is uh, a different way and, um, and it's known as rather dangerous. Bishop d5 is not considered the best move. The best move is probably a3 in this position, followed by um, bishop c2 and queen d3, threatening d5 without playing bishop d5, and it might go to h6 directly. We discussed this a little bit earlier in a previous video on the isolated queen pawn positions. Bishop d5 cannot be bad, of course, Knight b4, I don't really like this move. Uh, it's sometimes it's good, but it, White's plan is always to go a3 at some point anyway, so the knight will be kicked. So, it, of course, it's nice that the bishop is, is, is uh, after this move, you will not lose your white squared bishop. That's, by the way, very important. Uh, that the bishop uh, is kicked with the rook here, but it's temporary, and, uh, and at the same time, Black gives up all the pressure on this pawn. B6, 95, and also gave away this square for the knight. Uh, bishop B7. And here we see a different problem with uh, having the, 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 the played knight before. Rook E3, the rook lift. And in general, as a, as a rule, white is... Uh, black should be extremely careful at, uh, about allowing the rook to get to the king side. The thing is, it's a little bit like you're putting a big cannon in front of something and just blowing away. And, and it's very, very easy for black to get blasted away. For instance, already here, you can lose in, uh, in a second like here because it says boom and queen and rook are coming and you are mated, basically. So, rook e3. Don't allow this, and and that's also why I don't like knight b4 because at the moment black is already in some sort of trouble. Uh, this rook is coming here, and it will bring really serious uh, fire. Already you're threatening to take on f6 and on h7, so there's, there's serious problems here. Knight c6, you just take f6 and h7, and rook queen h5 and rook h3, and it's mate. Okay, I should probably show that. So something like this. Boom, 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 and you're finished, right? So it's very, very dangerous. Don't allow that. Don't allow the rook to get to the king side. It will be too dangerous. So g6 had to prevent the take on h7. Rook d3. 
of and and one of the things with this is that it prevents knight h5 due to this move boom and here and it's mate so already black is under serious pressure and black should not allow the rook to get to g3 and white should try to get a rook to the king side this is uh, a very important rule and bishop comes here rook e8 a3 pushing the knight away knight c6 makes sense trying to exchange pieces we saw earlier that's what you really want um, but here white is too strong there are too many pieces on the king side the only one who's not participating on the king side is this rook and um, so it's no uh, surprise that he can just blast through take 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 and and basically white is is, is winning here um, and we see a uh, very important little move don't be caught up with there is queen d3 there is a knight e5 queen c2 uh, it's also annoying that after 95 d takes 94 the, the queen is pinned here but queen b1 avoids this problem this one is gone uh, white could uh, black could resign here he's simply made it it will not be able to uh, to defend this and this just really shows why you should not allow the rook to get to d3 take and uh, yeah and of course, already we, we see that white has one uh, <laughs> a pawn or two pawns, I think, two pawns and have a devastating attack. And of course, yeah, this is uh, so. So this was a, a nice little game. And it was funny because uh, Keen and Miles were uh, competitors and, and competing about who will be the first English Grandmaster. I think actually Miles won that race. Uh, but he's dead now and Keane is not playing. Uh, he, he wrote some chess books. Uh, they were rather good actually. And then he started to write some rather bad books. Anyway, uh, he was doing it with left hand or what you call it. Okay, let's see another example. Uh, this was instructive, right? Don't allow the rook to get to the king side if you're uh, black. And try to get the rook to the king side if you're white. So. Next game is Pal Bengo against uh, Miroslav Filip from Hochevens in 1970. And they have an uh, Queen's Gambit accepted, which is often leads to isolated Queen Pawn positions. A4. This uh, has uh, ups and downsides. Uh, it gives away this square, but it prevents uh, b5. And b5 is is rather nice for black to have. Uh, we we know that from uh, Meron and also here's the queen's gambit. So, but giving away this uh, b4 square is of course uh, quite a high price to pay. In general, with the isolated queen pawn, you would prefer the pawn to be an a3, so white black does not have the b4 square. Queen e2, this is all mainline theory. And I think here you can actually take with a knight, and that's rather dangerous. Um, but this is also not bad. And all these uh, moves are normal. Knight b4, knight e5. And here, uh, black makes an instructive mistake. Uh, and it's no doubt, it's a, it's, it's a very clear mistake. He plays knight bd5. Um, I think bishop d7 is the main line going for bishop c6. Notice that rook, bishops, and, and knights are more of the same value here, uh, unlike in most other positions where you tend to like the bishop a little bit more. In uh, isolated queen pawn positions, knights are rather good. They are very good at blo blockading and attacking and so on. Uh, because it's the structure can often be fixed and giving the knight outpost, which knights like. Knight bd5 is definitely wrong. I think you can play bishop d7 or knight fd7. And this is wrong due to, and you probably guessed it, yeah. That's a big problem. The rook lift, it, black didn't prevent the rook lift, and it's coming, and it's coming to a king near you, and it's going to hurt a lot here. We already see that this is the cannon uh, sitting in front of uh, the king. 
And the king said, okay, I move. And the rook said, I move. And uh, now it's, it's already clear that black is in serious trouble here. Bishop e8 is a way to defend. And black is, is better uh, defended on the king's side than long. The long, but due to this rook, white will always have serious threats on the king's side. So uh, this is, is, is already threatening here, and black can't take because of queen h5. So g6 is, is forced, bishop h6, rook e1, white has all the pieces into, uh, into the game. Bishop, bishop g5, nasty pin here. Notice. The, the ultimate goal is, of course, the king attacking this knight again and threatening. Uh, there is a X-ray effect here, so black is threatening this, uh, white is threatening these things. So the queen will either have to move or um, or you play queen rook d8. But doesn't look that good uh, and. There's of course always uh, there's, there's like queen h4 threatening bishop takes f6, queen b6, and uh, white has really gotten happy with the with the rook lift. So here comes another rook, and that already threatens to take on f6 and take on h7 and play rook a3 check and queen h7 6 mate. Um, you want to see? And I think you don't need this bishop, so even this is, is not a problem. Um, and here, uh, no matter what he does, you come with this, and it's, it's winning. Um, and also, it's the same with this, it's even worse, because now the king has less space, so it's made earlier. So h5, weakening the king side even further. And uh, of course, this knight is a problem, so push back the queen, it has to go somewhere, but it has to keep this under control. Notice that there's always uh, the bishop here. So queen back and g4, also giving some air for the king. And here, this move, and yeah, well, the rest is simple. You're gonna take and you're gonna take here, and it's gonna be uh, made very quickly. So. Uh, Black resigned, and that was a rather elegant example of also the rook is hanging here, uh, of uh, the rook lift because white did two rook lifts. Uh, but so as a general rule, the rook lift is a very very powerful attacking idea. You should try to get it in when you're having an isolated queen pawn, and you should definitely try to avoid the rook from coming uh, to near your king when you're defending against the isolated queen pawn. I hope you liked this video. This was GM Talks. Thank you for watching.